friends, welcome back to the Ransom Tart Podcast. It is Easter week, and we just had um, Palm Sunday, and I love this week. This is a beautiful liturgical time of year to remember all kinds of powerful things. And so, happy Easter week to you. We are actually finishing the third part in a series on sustainability, which actually kind of fits in this week because some of the things we want to say it fit right into the resurrection of Christ, of how do you tap into a supernatural life in order to live this life? So, welcome back to part three on sustainability. I wake up this morning, and my discipline now is I do not check my phone as soon as I wake up, because that that pulls me immediately yes. into the pace of the world. Yes. Here's, a, here's three texts, there's a voice message, here's the news, here's the, you know, and so first step of discipline for me lately is I'm not, I'm not checking my phone when I first wake up. Mm-hmm. I go out in the kitchen, feed the dogs. I get a little time with God, say my prayers. And then I look at my mm-hmm. phone, but here's what happened. So I did that. I did that. That's the sustainable life. But then I check my phone and uh, here's this really exasperating message about a project that's currently going on. And it's one of those messages that you just know, this is just going to make a lot more work for me. I thought that that was resolved, mm. but it's not resolved. And so the temptation was jump in, solve it, get at it. But I pause and I ask, Jesus, should I tackle that right now? And Jesus says, don't even, don't mm. even, mm-hmm. don't even get pulled into that right now. That is utter distraction. Mm. Now, motives begin to play, right? Part of me wants to solve this because I want this off my yes. back. I want this monkey off my back. Another right. part of me wants to solve it because I kind of want to show these people <laughs> they were wrong, <laughs> frankly. And I've got such a great answer. Oh, I've got such a great answer. But that would have pulled me into about 35 minutes mm. in my morning yes. that I didn't have. I didn't, you know, Stacy, you know what our morning was like this morning. Right, yeah. We did not right. have 35 minutes. No. Yeah. And so Jesus is like, let go for now. And then there, there suddenly my life with God. Can I let that go? Why can't I let yes. that go? Why am I obsessing? You know, because the truth is, I have a very real choice. I have, lo- I have choices. I can clear the deck this morning. Yes. I really can. I don't need to answer that. I honestly don't. So that's what I'm describing it's about. Good. Here's an intrusion. God, are you really in this? What do you want me to do with this? And then how it kind of flushes. I love that posture, John, because because I'll have a similar thing, a creative idea, or, oh, no, I needed to get back to this person. Oh, oh, I need, whatever. I started snapping my fingers as I started thinking of things. But to let it go when I hear God say, not now, yeah, that's going to take mm. you out. We're supposed to be yes. just, I want to have time with you. We're, yeah. we're doing this. Your soul, it, it doesn't yeah. need to get buried there. What it requires of me is that I trust Him yeah. that, I'll remember mm-hmm. that if I, I'll remember it later, this good idea. And if even if I don't go and write it down, which sometimes I do, but to listen to him, mm-hmm. to not get taken out by mm-hmm. even my own internal world, not just interruptions, mm-hmm. but these internal interruptions. Oh, yeah. yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. So just to keep us on track, what we're describing is you do need a baseline. Yes. You need a sustainable life. And I want to talk about that next. But we were just acknowledging that even when you try to do that, there are these intrusions and it, it's just part of life. Yeah. Doesn't mean you're blowing it. Yes. You still have choices actually with a lot of those intrusions, not all of them. You know, the car breaks down, you got, you got to get to work. You got, you got to figure it out. Right. You know? and, and then I have some things I think God has for us, especially around divine intrusions. But Let's come back to the baseline now. So we were just we were just admitting some graciousness and some mercy, and it, it even happened to the guys. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it even happened in Mark six, right? To the disciples and Jesus, that kind of disruption. And Jesus says to them, the next sentence is, "Come away and get some rest." Mm. So Jesus is trying to establish a reasonable life. Mm. He's trying to, you know, we all need kind of that. Ask yourself: Is my current life sustainable? 10 years from now, will I be excited about my work? Will I be excited Mm. about my marriage? Will I be excited about God? 
Will I be excited about my church asking me to help on something? That's a good thing because it, it'll kind of help you know. And, and then some of those symptoms we were saying of like the wince when mm-hmm. the phone rings or the resentment at the email or the, you know. The reaction. Yeah, the, thank you. Reacting to our world mm-hmm. more and more versus responding to it. So here's what I want to ask is what are some of the things you've been doing to try and get to that sustainable mm-hmm. life? With the acknowledgement that the interruptions come and all that kind of thing, back to that in a minute. But what have you been doing what, to, to try and just get to that, that sustainable, yeah. yeah, I could do this for 10 more years. The word that comes to my mind immediately is rhythm and the Sabbath. God is brilliant. He knows that we need it. So a rhythm of being ruthless about my schedule so that I, I carve in rest. And I usually carve in more, actually because I know it's going to have a divine interruption. And I actually need time alone every day. And then at least every couple of months, a more extensive time alone with God. Like a whole day? Yeah, like a whole day. And if I could have a weekend, that'd be marvelous. But a whole day? (laughs) um, It just sounds so luxurious. But I can't hit the ground running. Mm. I can't run very far when Mm. I do that. And sometimes it's required and it's like a night of sleep. Sometimes you can go a night without sleep and you're you're fine the next day. Two nights, you're a little bit of a mess. Three nights, don't even, Mm. you can do nothing. So a rhythm of a pace with Jesus where I protect our time in the morning, Mm. where I can go to his word first, not to Facebook. Mm you know, praying the daily prayer and not just racing through it, but really tuning my heart in. I feel the difference. Mm-hmm. It's it's measurable yeah. within. Yeah, it is. There's so much wisdom in what you're saying. And one particular piece of what you said, I just want to repeat because it's so profound. You said you, you not only schedule rest, but you try to schedule more than you need, knowing there will be some divine disruptions. I mean, yes. there's just such maturity in that. And it's, it's convicting because I've schedule rest and I schedule enough. And then there's divine <laughs> disruptions, right? Yes. So I just hear you saying it. there's this expect the unexpected. Right. And, and that's that sustainable baseline. But there's a lot of maturity in that. that. It sounds like that's a woman who has developed that and cultivated out of some Has pain. a history, right? <laughs> who has a history. So I literally plan for twice as much. Mm. And I sometimes end up with half as yes. much as I need. But Right. Despite yeah. your best planning. Yes. Yeah. Despite, and so again, we're acknowledging that, folks. But this isn't a blaming podcast. We're acknowledging despite our best intentions, mm. what helps us establish, what have we been doing, choices we've been making to live more in the direction of a sustainable yes. life. Okay. So here's the big idea. Listen, first off, back to Francis Schaeffer. Okay. When the Holy Spirit is moving, okay, there is always tremendous cost to the people of God. This is what we forget, he said. This is the opposite of what we might think. When the Holy Spirit is moving, when God is at work, there is always tremendous cost to the people of God, weariness and tears and battles. So first off, that elusive thing of, I am always rested, my cup is always full, I'm always in a great place and I'm operating from there, doesn't exist. Okay? Follow me carefully. Say that again, Say it again. So that life where I have arranged my schedule so responsibly, I've made such wise and discerning decisions, I've pursued my, my counseling, my inner healing, my walk with God to such a place that I am always full and I'm always at rest and I'm always in a good place. That life does not exist. You can't find that life in the scriptures. There's no saint that has ever, Jesus Christ did not live that life. Okay, that life does not exist. But here's the thing the more we participate in the kingdom of God, the more we're part of what God's doing, you need a supernatural life. Okay, so follow me. The Christian life is a supernatural life. The things that it requires of you, forgiving that person for that hundredth time, overlooking that remark, not responding to that email that you're being baited into responding, all those, you know, all that stuff, that requires a supernatural life. You can't, you can't. You can't live that on just good, healthy human living, (laughs) okay? Just a reasonable life that's well-disciplined and balanced and you've got, you know, 
Okay? So the same, the same is exactly true um, about restoration. That if God is supernaturally interrupting your life and bringing people in that are wearying, exhausting, prayer, da da da, um, we had one of those days yesterday. And, and when I woke up this morning, I'm like, I, I'm shot. I am shot. And Jesus, I need you to restore my soul. And Jesus says, basically to me, I'm great at that. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. I, I'm great at that. I can mm. do that. This is Psalm 23. He restores my soul. This is the big surprise. We get out there and we try and live a kingdom life. We try and do the Christian thing. We try and, you know, we're being involved. We're loving our kids. We're intervening for the neighbors. We're, you know, counseling or praying or we're working on the thing at church. We're serving, you know, and then we're exhausted. And here's, here's the big surprise, gang. We try and solve that without a supernatural provision. Okay. But if God has asked supernatural things of you, he has a supernatural provision for you, okay? And what we usually do is we go from the battle or we go from the exhausting thing and we try and turn to very human things to solve it, okay? So television doesn't solve it, tried it, okay? Uh, beer doesn't solve it, tried it. Chocolate doesn't solve it, tried it. And we, we turn to all these sort of natural things God actually restores the soul like he does. We have seen this so many times. Stacy and I, I said we had a very hard day yesterday, but, but we watched God move powerfully in it. And before we got into this thing that we were a part of, we, we didn't want to go. Our hearts were not in it. But once we kind of allowed God in, it's the consent thing. He gave us what we needed. The same thing is true of your restoration. Please invite God into your restoration. This weariness, these tears, this kingdom life is very demanding. It just is. And that perfectly balanced life that we'd all love to arrive at, it doesn't exist. Now, you do need to plan for sustainability. You can't live like a fool and then blame it on God. Okay, but intrusions come of all kinds, including warfare, which is exhausting. And just as God provides everything that you need to do those things and be part of his kingdom, he provides the supernatural rest. Yes. He restores our souls. Divine intrusions come. And I really need to say something big about that um, before we close here. And we had a pretty remarkable experience. Morgan, a friend of yours and mine, came in a while ago now and was in pretty bad shape pretty fried from his very, very, very busy life. And he's a good guy. And he's, um, but his life, like most people's, is overwhelming. And there was a group of people that were together, but he needed some prayer. And so we prayed and he received some pretty significant ministry. <laughs> but what was the most shocking thing was that over the next couple hours, he starts praying for other people. Oh, Remember that? In an hours, like the same day. Yeah, we're talking the same guy. Yes. Same day. Yes. And what you were astounded by was the availability of supernatural restoration. Yes. Right? Remember how shocked well, you were? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but because it was coming through a man who'd given consent, right? Yeah. He was banged up, yes. but he loves God. Yep. And he he is yep. a rare man who has given himself fully over to God. He has a yes. consecrated life, yes. and therefore the kingdom can flow. And as we watched in this prayer time with this guy, like sometimes pretty quickly, mm -hmm. and you would never have guessed. No. When he walked in the building, yep. you would never have guessed that two hours later, he would have been praying mm -hmm. and intervening for people and sharing and laughing. And, right. Right? You go, that guy, that guy needs. It's going to be a lot of work. He needs a long Sabbath. Yes. Right? That's that miscalculation yes. where our weary souls think we know. God understands a supernatural life requires a supernatural life. Mm -hmm. Okay? Supernatural living requires supernatural restoration. He has that available for you. Ask for it. Like literally. Like, Lord, Psalm 23. You restore my soul. Would you please restore my soul? I'm talking about a supernatural impartation mm -hmm. of his life mm -hmm. in us, right? That, that allows a, a levels of restoration. Maybe it's through a time of worship. Maybe it's a walk that you take. It's a 30-minute run. Yes. That's all you could get in. But with God in it, it was sufficient. Yes. Right? 
rather than this elusive, yes. oh, if I could only get to that place where I'm whole enough and my life is balanced enough and I don't have those intrusions. Like, nobody's going to get that life, gang. Right. Nobody's going to get that life. Right. What we have instead is the availability of He restores my soul. Just as much as God fills you for your missions, as he fills you for that hard conversation, as he fills that time of prayer, just like that, he, he fills your restoration, okay? And that's the kingdom economy. Yes. 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 You don't need to take a year off. The kingdom economy can accomplish those things. Right, you're not on your own. Yeah, they can. God can accomplish those things within spaces that we would be very surprised to think mm. that he could. That's what he's great at. So you just begin with, Lord, restore my soul. Mm. Pray that every day. Mm. Jesus, restore my soul. Restore my soul. After that tough meeting, Jesus, restore my soul. After that phone call, Jesus, restore my soul. After the difficult visit with the in-laws, Jesus, restore yes. my soul. Restore my soul. And you ask for it, right? And he will shepherd you into that. So much more that could be oh, said. So good. So much more that could be done. But we just had to have this conversation and, and wanted to share these things with you. And friends, hope this was helpful. This was Morgan Snyder, John, and Stacey Eldridge here on the Ransomed Heart Podcast in conversation about sustainability. You might want to listen to this over again, by the way, because some of the things that we have said in here are absolutely life-changing. Should you embrace them? Particularly that whole thing about God's ability to restore. But the whole conversation, I, I, you just might want to listen to this again. So bless you, friends. 